Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Sister to me, what's your name, brother? Robert and Jerry. So, do y'all know what we teach on here? You don't know, y'all don't know. So, we are Israel united in Christ. And our job is to teach the so called blacks and Hispanics that they are the biblical Israelites according to the Bible. Right. Have you ever, are you familiar with the Israelites? Have you ever heard of the Israelites? So, you for, so who are the Israelites according to the Bible? The chosen people, right? So y'all brothers, y'all brothers now know the Israelites are the chosen people. So what I want to do is direct your attention to this sign here on the left side. Now on this sign, we have the 12 tribes of Israel. On the on your right hand side is the names we was given in slavery. On the on your left hand side is the biblical tribe name you belong to. So where do you you brothers and sisters see yourself? On the sign. Eh? You say American black? What about you? Me you too? What, what about you? What would you identify as in this modern day society? What's your nationality? You don't know? So was your forefathers brought here in the transatlantic slave trade? Your ancestors? Okay, and you're the tribe of Judah. So let's get a couple things about the tribe of Judah. So what we identify is your true nationality is a Jew. You are a Jew. You are from the tribe of Judah. Give me Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Bring it out. So sister, uh, say your name one more time. Tamia. So sister Tamia from Joy Baptist Church. Tabernacle. Joy Tabernacle. And what kind of church do your brothers go to? The Baptist Church, Christian Church. So you you Joy Joy uh, from Joy Tabernacle, sister to me from Joy Tabernacle. Did they teach you that you were from the tribe of Judah in Joy Tabernacle? No, I, I've heard of that a while ago. You heard of that, but I've they. Only been with the church three months. Okay, you only been with the church three months. Listen to this right here. Read what you got. The Book of Jeremiah, chapter fourteen, verse two. Yeah. Judah mourneth. The tribe of Judah is in mourning. Why? Because they go through much pain and affliction. The real Jews are persecuted on a daily basis. We get shot down in the streets. We fill the prisons. Our children are in danger at all the time. Right? That's what that caused you to mourn. Read on. And the gates, they're all leaders. The gates is our leaders. The pastors in our communities, the uh, today in modern day, they try to set up entertainers as our leaders. But it's telling you our leadership is lacking, meaning weak. Read on. They are black. No, but I thought all Jews was white. They are black. But I was told that Jewish people, the people with the curly hair and the hats, that they was white. What did the tribe, what's the tribe of Judah? They are black unto the ground. He said they black unto the ground. Like you look into the ground, you see the dirt, right? The deeper you dig into the dirt, what happens? The darker it gets. That's right. That's right. Meaning, the tribe of Judah is multiple shades of brown. Right. The tribe of Judah is a black tribe. Give me Hebrews chapter 7. So, with knowing this information, we, I can identify who our Lord and Savior is. And I'm going to show you why I say that. Hebrews chapter 7. You got what I want, officer? Listen to this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord's... Wait, it said, it is evident. Right? It's evidence on the earth that our Lord... Who is our Lord? Who you say? Say it loud. Jesus. Jesus. 
this right. Read it again. For it's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Where did our Lord come from? Sprang out of Judah. Now I want to see if y'all been putting together the clues. The Bible said our Lord comes from Judah. So that will make our Lord Jesus what? A black man. A black man. That is our job to come out here to cast down the lies that have been taught to us. Where? The Christian church. The Christian church has set up in our minds that we are nothing and the white man is Jesus and God. But the Bible tells us Jesus Christ is a black man. Furthermore, let's go to the book of Revelations. Let's go to the book of Revelations to find out the true image of Jesus the Christ. Revelations chapter 1 is starting at verse 1. I want you to hear this and I want you to and ask yourself, am I being taught this at Joy Tabernacle? Am I being taught this in the Baptist church? Am I being taught this in the Christian church? Listen to this. Read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So this was given unto John while he was on the island of Patmos. He was a prisoner at the time. It was sent to him to show the servants of God. Who was the servants of God? We just talked about it. Who, who, no, who are the servants? What's the name? We just... What's the name? The Israelites. That's one thing I need y'all to remember. The Israelites. This was given to John to show the Israelites in the last days. Read verse 13. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Now, Officer Hodge, uh, I want you to come up and c hold up that sign right there. Hold up that sign. Right? The one of Christ. Right? And you hold up that one, right? Uh huh. Now, I want you to read it again, Officer. Verse 13, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Now, look here at the signs. It says, in the midst of the seven candlesticks. That's referring to a menorah, right? Well, you got on this side, you got seven candlesticks, right? But look in here. This is the image that we grew up with all our life. This is the image that they told us was Jesus all our lives. Do you see seven candlesticks? You don't see them, right? So that's straight one, right? Read the next part. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. He said it was one that looked like Jesus. Read. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. He had a garment like this. Like, you see how the officer got that garment over there? His was all the way down to the foot. Right, Read. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Now he had a golden girdle, pure gold, go around the middle. Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now I'm going to come back over here. Now the Bible says it identifies Jesus Christ and it says that his head and his hairs were white like wool. Now this is my next question. What people on the planet Earth have woolly textured hair? What'd you say? Black people. So-called African-American people. Brother, you should go ahead. No, but you got woolly hair right on your head. I'm talking to you. You got woolly hair right here, brother. I'm looking at woolly hair. This is woolly texture. When you look, used to look up the definition of woolly hair, used to look it up, it would say the hair of Negroes. We used to look up wool. Now they took that out. Why? Because the Bible identified Jesus Christ got woolly hair, right? That's now, right. let's look at this image that Grandma had up in the house. <laughs> Do he have woolly hair? No. No, he got straight hair like a dog, right? right. He got straight hair like, uh, like, uh, what y'all ever seen, uh, what's that? That Air Bud. You know what I'm saying? He got, what about him? No. Is his hair even white? No. no. Like, you see your beard coming in white? 
white and woolly, just like Jesus the Christ. Yes, right. right, so let's get some more information, right? Read what you got, officer. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now it says his eyes was as a flame of fire. Do that mean he was shooting beams out his eyes? What does that mean? His eyes was a flame of fire. He mean it was red. His eyes was red. Why was Jesus Christ's eyes red? That's a question. Who can help me? I'm going to help you out. What was Jesus Christ's first miracle? He turned something into something else. He, he turned water into wine. What happens when you drink wine? Your eyes turn red. His eyes was red. Why don't you prove it? You got that? You're in the spirit. Listen to this. The book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 12. Because when we come to find out, Moses prophesied about Jesus. Listen to this. His eyes shall be red with wine. Jesus Christ's eyes was red because he drank wine. Like, y'all brothers came up with beers, which is too early to be drinking. And I'm pretty sure y'all know y'all shouldn't be drinking this early. But when you drink that beer, your eyes red. I can see your eyes red already, right? Jesus Christ. He drank wine, but he did not get drunk. He drank it in moderation. I want y'all to understand that. Moderation. Meaning he didn't drink it to get drunk to where now he messing up his life. And he sinned it, but he drank wine. Right now, let's go back to Revelations. Because we're going to get it down back. Because today, we're going to figure out the true image of Jesus Christ. Where did you got? The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 15. And his feet like a fire. Now John looked down. He see, first he seen his head. He seen his hair. Then he seen his eyes. Then he looked down at his feet. He said it's like fine brass. What color is brass? Gold is a derivative of brown. You don't get you don't get brass without brown. But he said Jesus' feet looked it like brass. So if his feet was brown, was his face white and then he just had like some condition that turned his feet brown? No, that means the rest of his body was brown. Real. As if they burned in a furnace. Now to give you detail on this brass. He said it looked like it got burned in a furnace. What happens when something get burnt? If you burn rice, what happened to it? It turned black. So he telling you, Jesus wasn't just a regular brown. He wasn't just a light-skinned brown. He wasn't, he, like a lot of people, they say he was Middle Eastern. No, he was dark. He was dark. A dark-skinned black man. Before y'all go, I got a question for y'all, because it looks like y'all about to go. Because y'all about to miss the extremely important part. Now that y'all know Jesus is black, what is your nationality? Because Jesus Christ got a nationality. If Jesus Christ is the same as me, what is my nationality? What is Jesus' nationality? What is it? You so, but black is a color. What is your what nation do you come from? Black man? African American. You say African American. I'm gonna tell you that's the wrong answer. That's right. That answer is the reason we settle for the ghettos. That's right. What you do? Examine Africa. Africa got over 50 countries in it. Where in Africa do you come from? When you examine America, America was named after a man named Amerigo Vespucci, a white Italian. Africa named after Leo Scipius Africanus. What you just told me is, I come from two white men. I'm an African American. I come from two white men. Is, can two white men have a black baby? No. No. What we coming to find out today, we are not African Americans. We are. Give me Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 Because you was about to walk away before you even found out Before you, you was about to walk away from a treasure You know you got a game full of treasure You was about to walk right past it and walk away Brother, you need this information, brother Listen to this right here, read what you got The book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 3 The ox knoweth his owner Now how many of us out here heard the expression You dumb as an ox Jesus, I mean the Bible telling you the ox, he might be a dumb animal, but he know his owner. He know who he belong to, right? Right? And the ass is master's crib. The ass is a jackass. A donkey. He know where he live. He know where he come from. He say an ox know who he belong to. A donkey know where he come from. But what? But Israel! 
know. But the Israelites, Rick, does not know. The Israelites don't know who they belong to, and they don't know where they come from. I'm going to go give you an example. You say you're from Africa. Where in Africa are you from? You said you African American. So where do you come from? You don't know, right? What about you? Where in Africa you come from? Where in Africa you come from? What about you, sis? You don't know. We gonna show you where in Africa you come from. Give me the book of Galatians. You know what I want? We gonna show you today where in Africa our people come from. Where in actually the land of Ham, because that, that, that land was named the land of Ham at first. It was resident by the Canaanites until we took it. So now we're going to figure out where it is that we come from originally. Listen to this. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem. But where? But Jerusalem. But where? But Jerusalem. Which is above is free. Which is the mother of us all. It said Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Another word for the mother of us all, the motherland. So, so Jerusalem is the motherland. Preach. Now you got to examine. Who live in Jerusalem today? Do our people live in Jerusalem? What happened? Why is it that we don't live in Jerusalem no more? How did we get all the way to Flint, Michigan? <laughs> to where people not poisoning our water? Let's see what Jesus Christ said. Go to Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Matter of fact, let's go to... Deuteronomy 28 first, because that's where it looked like you was going. Then we go back to Luke. We gonna figure out. We gotta put together the clues. How is it that we get? We the chosen people come from Jerusalem. How is it that we got from Jerusalem all the way here to Flint, Michigan? Let's get it. Give me verse 15. You know what I want? Yes, sir. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. No. But it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, and we, the chosen people, don't listen to all the commandments of God, what will happen? And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, these what? All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Y'all understand what that Bible just said? He said, if we as a people disobey God, curses will befall us. So let's read verse 68. Because we got to figure out how is it we get from Jerusalem to Flint, Michigan. Because it's a curse that fell upon our people. Let's see what it was. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with Shem. Now, Sister Joy. I mean, Sister... Oh, help me out. Help me out. Sister Tamia. Sister Tamia from Joy Tabernacle. In the church, did you learn about Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt? Not at the church, but you know, you're all familiar with that, right? About Moses going before Pharaoh and saying, let my people go, Amen. right? So, in Egypt, what was the status of the Israelites? What was their status? Was they the ruling class? Was they uh, middle class or was they slaves? Huh? They were the rulers at that time. You said they was the rulers of Egypt? No. No. They were slaves. Oh, they were slaves. They was right. Remember, they was forced to build pyramids. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Right. Listen to this. Read it again. Okay. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. They say the Lord gonna bring the Israelites into Egypt again. So. When you examine the word Egypt, it comes from the word Egyptos. It means bondage. It means slavery, captivity. You understand? Mm -hmm. So now, he said, the Israelites, if they disobeyed the word, they was going back into slavery. But how? With ships! How did the Israelites go with ships? With ships! Do you see, the Bible says, the chosen people of God would, because of their disobedience, would go into slavery. How? With ships. ships. How did we as a people get to this side of the earth? Sh sardines. Like sardines on ships. Wait, come on. Say it one more time, sister. Say it loud. Like sardines on ships. Wait, like sardines on. on ships. So now when we come to realize, slavery 
is Bible prophecy. It was prophesied slavery but before God chosen people for what? Our disobedience. Because we disobey God because we made a covenant. We ever heard the word old covenant, new covenant? The old covenant is an agreement. The agreement is we're going to be the chosen people. God is going to be our God. We're going to obey what God say. If we do, we will be set up as the ruling class on the earth. We would be the kings, the princes, and we would govern the earth. If we didn't, we would be put on the bottom of society. I'm going to show, show you what I mean, right? Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I speak unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. He said, they shall, you shall see it no more again, referring to your homeland, referring to the blessings. What was our homeland? We just went over it. We just went over it. What's the homeland? Yeah. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is in, yeah, the mother of us all. Jerusalem, which is in uh, Northeast Africa, right? But they always try to separate Africa from the Bible. They give you a white image of Christ, a white image of David. But when you examine the Bible, it's speaking about from Ethiopia to the northern east of Africa. So why is it they always try to take Africa out of the Bible? The Israelites were slaves in Egypt. Where's Egypt? Africa. But we identify, when we come to find out all our life, we've been lied to as a people. Uh -huh. Right. So, so you had a question, sister? Yeah. No, no. She just got to listen to me. Okay, I'll praise. I'll praise to the most. So what we going over is how special we is. Get what doing around me, 7 and 6. Because one, knowing who you are according to the Bible, how important it is, is because if you don't know who you are, you don't know where you're going. Right? Because right. they told us all our lives we was niggas. They told us we was black, we was colored. But now we finding out we are the Israelites. Yes. How you doing? All praise. God chosen people. Oh, but I like that Afro too, sister. All praise. Now I want y'all to hear something God said about the Israelites. Something God said about all you individuals out here. Listen to this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people. God said we are holy people. What does holy mean? Somebody help me out. Pure. Yes. Pure. Oh, yes. The word holy means separate. Yes, oh, okay. So we are separate people. Meaning, the Arabs over there, the ch white man, the China man, right. God made them all. Right. But he said, let me take this people over here. Because right. I, I got, I feel a certain way about them. Right? Them wild people. Oh, praise. Oh, praise. Right, read on. Come on, separate. No, 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 no. I won't. Deuteronomy 7. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy. Before you go, says I got one more scripture. After this one, I got one more scripture for you. Because I want you to, I want you to, I want us all to be have, leave here with life-changing information. Right? So I'm going to read this one, then I got a certain scripture just for my sisters. Read on. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people. No, equality. Above all people. No, I'm supposed to be below the white man. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now God told us as the Israelites, because Israel means prince of God. So you mean y'all princes of God? Y'all the princesses of the living God. Right? Y'all got power with God, right? So God gave us commandments and told us we got to keep them. If we didn't commit, keep them, we was going to go into slavery, oppression. The things that you're seeing now is because we disobeyed God's commandments. So I'm going to give you one commandment for you to do Deuteronomy 22 and 5. This, this scripture just for my sisters, right? And my brothers as well, because we got to build up. To build strong nations, we need strong families. Right? So listen to this right here. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. A woman. Now these my sisters, my, my beautiful black sisters, my Israelite sisters, rather. Read. A woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So what do y'all sisters help me out? What is that talking about? It means like me and Garvey. Oh. <laughs> you said what? Dresses. What? So what you mean by dresses? What'd 
don't wear trousers. I don't read it one more time. Oh, you see, you was just hype. You said, yeah, yeah, tell him. And then you said, oh, oh, no, oh. You, come on, sis. I don't read it one more time. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Listen to this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. A woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So we all know, we all know trousers is for men. That's why they come with zippers. Absolutely. Oh, come on. Absolutely. I'm gonna give you the give me absolutely give me Exodus 20. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna prove one thing. I'm gonna show you the first time God instituted trousers. He didn't even call them trousers. I'm gonna show you what he called them. Hold on, sister, you gotta go. Sister, this is for you. Alright, one more thing before you go, because you got the beautiful afro. You gotta wear a dress. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth